Hi guys. It is just a nasty, miserable, yuck, depressing, slit your wrist kind of day. Here in the end times and what's left of the frozen wasteland of Garfield, Texas, where it sounds like it's um, maybe starting to sleet here in this January day in mid-November. That would be Wednesday, November 13th, 2019, I believe. And, uh, sitting here figuring out which uh, story to run with. The We Are So Fucked Doomer headline of the day. Before I do, I, I need to send out a big thank you to my old buddy, <coughs> Marty Knudsen. Marty Knudsen, uh, for his continuing support of, of the dwindling support I'm getting here for my work on YouTube. Thank you, uh, Archangel Marty Knudsen, for your kind gift to what I do here on YouTube and Brother Raymond from over in England I believe thank you for your kind donation as well to my PayPal account and with that no further ado I was actually having a oops we have lost the Girl Scout cookie time sign are the Girl Scouts out again with this year's crop of palm oil bombs or not. Has that happened yet? Uh, I think those little fuckers start showing up about this time of year. Anyway, uh, since I couldn't find anything on the mainstream media to suggest that we are fucked, except maybe the Black Friday ads that are already appearing. That's a good sign of how fucked we are. I want to thank uh, Alert Tribes member Jan Hubert for sending in me this essay by Dutch lecturer, professor, and financial geographer Ewald Engelen. Uh, his essay showing up today and I guess you pronounce G-R-O-E-N-E. -E. Is that the Dutch spelling of green? But anyway, I will put the link on here for you to read the rest of this yourself. But uh, we're going to let uh, Ewald tell us about eco-modernist. <laughs> the contradictory term eco-modernist. Take it away. <clears throat> Eco-modernists firmly believe that human inventiveness and capitalist dynamics will avert the ecological disaster. Well, I guess the bullshit. Yes, human inventiveness and capitalist dynamics are what brought us into the ecological disaster. But anyway. Okay, the proof for that is a progress story. A progress story that understands human history as a collective project of self-exaltation in 10,000 years from caveman to banker, so to speak. In this story, everything gets better. Poverty decreases. Body height increases. Life expectancy increases. Prosperity grows and teeth become whiter. Free markets with a dash of the rule of law and democracy technological innovation and the renunciation of God and soul to give free reign to the ratio. Free reign to the ratio are the engines behind this process. And just as we have managed to overcome past crises of reason, we will also be able to curb the self-caused 
climate crisis. Not by consuming less, but more. Not by growing less, but more. Modern man like Baron von Munchausen, this time he will pull his own hair out of the swamp. <laughs> I don't believe it. First, the progress story itself is a comfortable lighting table that is inconsistent with the facts. British anthropologist Jason Hickel has put a stop to some fantastic blogs with the myth that modernization and globalization have increased equality and reduced poverty. It is what is, it is, what is called a data construct in the social sciences. This means that only, nothing else, only the financial economic value of market transactions is considered and the social values produced outside of the market are not taken into account. Say, care, meals, help, education, this leads to a gross underestimation of pre-modern prosperity and means that it does not look at how things have progressed in the course of history with poverty or inequality, but only at the historical shift of activities from the informal to the formal economy, and that is something completely different. Secondly, I do not believe it because the hope that markets and innovation will save us is based more on magical thinking than on scientific plausibility. The eco-modernists like to mirror the increased energy efficiency and the dematerialization of our production process as proof that we are on the right track and that we will soon have the holy grail of absolute decoupling of growth on the one hand and the use of raw materials and emissions on the other. The eco-modernist tells us that we are on the right track. It is true that the amount of energy per unit of product or per kilometer driven and flown has fallen considerably. Our planes have become lighter. The engines in our cars have become smaller. The newspaper has disappeared from our house. And the smartphone weighs a fraction of the IBM Colossus of the past and can do so much more. In a book that was published last month entitled More From Less, the well-known American business economist Andrew McAfee used examples of this kind to argue that capitalism and the planet do indeed go together. In this story, Renewable energy and electric mobility are the technologies that will save us and will prevent the need for radical system change. And whoever claims otherwise, such as the undersigned, <coughs> char charges the suspicion of misusing the environmental misery for the realization of his or her private anti-capitalist utopia. A pile of reports has since become available that teaches that this is nonsense and that radical system change is indeed needed. 
And again, it is Jason Hickel who has summarized this for us. Even under the most favorable conditions, if all currently available sustainable technologies can be rolled out quickly and smoothly and the tax burden shifts quickly and smoothly from labor to pollution, we can only succeed in decoupling growth and emissions relatively, not absolutely, and the latter is necessary to keep the temperature rise within Parisian boundaries. And for the sake of convenience, I am silent about the fact that any ecological gain per kilometer is canceled out against the constant rise in energy consumption per capita. The environmental benefit of lighter aircraft does not outweigh the insane increase in the number of flights. The increased efficiency of our cars does not outweigh the madness of very heavy SUVs. Qualitative progress loses out on quantitative decline. In other words, if you want to save the planet, capitalism will really have to be challenged. No eco-modern magic helps against that. Amen, Brother Eagland or whatever your name was. But anyway, <laughs> now that we have brought a little bit of reality uh, in to balance out the bullshit of the mainstream media, of course there is only one story on the mainstream media today, and that is the I word. But now that I have uh, checked out some reality, I'm going to turn my energy slaves back on and consider and continue to sit here and shiver in my fucking little uh, prison I have built for myself and Girl Scout cookie time. Get out there and enjoy Girl Scout cookie time while you still can. Because we are so fucked. Bye, guys.